What's happening, internet? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Adrian, aka Foam X Cosplay. If you're new to my channel, I make a lot of cosplay tutorials, fan films, movie and TV reviews, fitness and fandom, and everything else in between. So if you like my content, please make sure to leave a like, comment, definitely subscribe to my channel. We're going to go over my first 3D printer, which is the Creality Ender 3 version 2. This is more of how you can make this your first 3D printer as someone who's really just getting into the hobby of 3D printing. And without further ado, let's do it. Starting off with the reasons why I got the Creality Ender 3 V2. First thing you need to do when starting out, do your research. And based on my research, the best entry-level printer is the Ender 3. So I got it for a good price, around 200 250 US dollars. I got mine from Lazada because that's what we have here in the Philippines. I then got to work setting it up. Now that was a whole other can of worms. Setup takes a lot of work. It's not hard, it's just very confusing. Please note this is just a quick overview of the steps you should be taking because I'm not the expert myself either. Shout out to Just Vlad for making the tutorials on how to set up the Ender 3. Very, very helpful. I will leave a link to that in the description. Installation is uh, half the battle. So if you install it right, you don't have to worry about it. Calibration is the next important step. Ideally, you should set all the parts out so you can see everything, lay it all out. First, you install the Z-axis. The main pillars make sure the holes are pointing inwards on the right bar facing you on the left side facing you that's where you install the axis limit switch after that you just install the z-axis motor kit and the t-type screw the t-type screw is lubricated so try not to hold it for too long just screw it in right away immediately after you screw your motor kit into place after that the next step was installing the main joint here the pneumatic joint which is where the actual printer filament comes from it only goes side to side the additional movement comes from the bed going back and forth you're gonna want to install the synchronous belt first very important that you get it nice and flat so that you have a smooth flow so you just slide your synchronous belt on top and then you can assemble the z-axis passive block then slide the nozzle kit over then you install the, the x-axis tensioner once you have the main nozzle kit assembly all set up you then slide it over the two pillars, it'll slide straight in. You make sure that the screwy thing goes straight through the hole where the extruder assembly is. You'll see it, you can't miss it. Just slide everything right down. If it slides right down, you're on the right track. After that, you can install the gantry profile, which is the top part. This is basically your roof limit. You can't print anything past that height. So just keep that in mind. I've seen people put the actual filament hanger inside the machine, but that's for bigger models like the Creality CR10. I wouldn't do that because I'd automatically lose half of the height I could possibly use. And why would I do that? You put your material rack on top of the thing. Once you have that ready, you have to then put in all of the wire connections where they should be. Make sure that the X wires go in the X ports, the E wires go in the E ports, and then you're pretty much set with the actual physical assembly. After that, and this is the next most important step, this single step is the thing that took most of my time and took most of my test filament fixing your bed. So you press prepare, you go to auto home. That way you can see how it looks like when it's in its default position. This thing's the extruder. This thing is the bed. It should go boom. Once it almost touches, you press disable stepper. That way you can adjust your things freely. Now to adjust the actual bed itself, you use the knobs at the bottom of the bed. So you just twist it. You have to make sure that your nozzle is about one A4 paper distance away from each of the corners or else you're gonna have a really, really bad time. Keep adjusting, take your time with this. Cause if not, you're gonna keep repeating it like I did and it's gonna suck. Do it until you find the comfortable height where each of them, once again, papers distance away from the bed. Once you have that ready, now you can finally preheat the thing. Very easy, just go to prepare, preheat. The knob system is very intuitive, there's no lag. If you do this maybe five times in a row, you're gonna memorize your interface right away, at which point everything becomes easy in terms of operating the machine. I like it, I like it a lot. Once you've preheated your thing, you then place your filament. I started out with the white filament, I didn't like it. I then immediately went to the one kilo of PLA plus that came with it. Loading the filament, you press the extrusion string, 
and you shove your filament into the extruder. You shove it all the way in and then you use the knob to start feeding your spaghetti and turning it into angel hair pasta on the other end. Now, once you start having your very thin strips coming out of your nozzle, that's how you know you're ready to go. The next important step, get your file. The best sources I've found as someone who only learned of 3D printing four days ago is Thingiverse because everything's free there and you'd be surprised but you can find another good place is called 3D. There are a lot of free stuff there. My mini factory if you want to start right away with D&D minis. Once you have your SDL file, you downloaded them from these free sites. You can then download Ultimaker Cura, which is what everyone and their mothers who has 3D printers recommends. So once you have your STL file from the free websites, you then put it smack dab into your Ultimaker Cura, which you're going to set up first. <laughs> Make sure you pick your printer as well as your kind of material which you're using. You set up properly before you even print. That way you don't waste filament like I did. Once you have your file, you're going to take your STL file. You're going to put it in your Cura. It's going to load automatically. You're then going to check your settings. Now, one major problem that I encountered which really turned me off at the start, really peeved me out, was the fact that I got a lot of stringing, i.e. when your nozzle leaves the model and it goes off on its own tangent, it leaks and then it drags the leak onto your model and then weaves it into the next layer. Your model comes out looking like a Lovecraftian monster. That is what happened to these D&D minis right here. While they printed well, I did not put any supports on them. So what ended up happening was they became filled with the stringy material. I looked for how to change settings so that you could get rid of the stringing problem, which I found to be a more common problem with the Ender 3. Once I looked for the settings, I then found another video who I will also shout out here by 3D printed tabletop. So I copied some of his settings. While I haven't fixed the settings yet for multiple prints in one go, I found that if you print one at a time based on the settings I have, they're going to come out extremely pleasantly. The Stark map marker from Game of Thrones. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go over these in a separate video, but I found that once I found the right settings, it printed by itself. I'm making a big deal out of using your slicing software properly and how to do it because I found that once I adjusted the right bed height, all of my problems were then on the back end, which is basically everything on your laptop. You check your quality, layer height 0.2 millimeters. You can go as low as 0.05 if you're printing minis. That way, it doesn't have as many print lines. Next, for top layers, I only need 10. Bottom layers, I'm gonna try to put one because so far, I haven't printed with any bottom layers. Then we go to infill or how much of the inside you actually fill. So you can have the external shape, but then on the inside, it's hollow, in which case that's not gonna work out. So my infill density is 30%. That way I'm not using too much filament. I'm not wasting a lot of material. As for material, that's another thing. I learned to adjust the settings both on my computer as well as on my printer. So I've found that the best printing temp for me, the nozzle temp is between 210 to 220 degrees Celsius. I found that the best build plate temperature, the default is 60. I found that 75 to 85 is the best. Because if you keep it at 60, your model's not gonna stick. It's gonna start dragging itself. So, keep it higher. Next, you then want your speed to not be too fast. The default's around 40 millimeters per second or so. I keep mine at 80 because I can afford to keep it at that speed based on what I'm printing. You just learn to adjust because the slower your print is, the more careful your printer is. And then here, travel. This is what's going to fix your actual stringing problems. Now. Please note, once again, not an expert, I just fixed this with trial and error. But so far, I found these to work very well. My retraction distance is now 10.5 millimeters. My retraction speed is very fast, 60 millimeters per second. Now, retraction is very important because it means that when your nozzle's not in use, right, rather than leak, it sucks it back up. That's what the retraction is for. So when it sucks it back up, it gives your material enough time while traveling to hold it in before it prints onto your model. Retraction minimum travel 0.5 millimeters. I'm just putting everything at maximum speed and minimum starting amount. That way, I know 
that the filament is going to go straight back up the nozzle when not in use. Very important as well, combing mode. This keeps the nozzle within printed areas when traveling because your model, if you leave it alone, the nozzle is going to travel off somewhere else. It's going to leak, then it's going to return, thus creating stringing. So I put not on outer surface. There are other settings here which work well with other people, but I found not on outer surface to work for me. As for cooling, if you leave it, it's going to go to 255 speed. I set it at 100. Use your fan too much. It's gonna dry the filament quicker, making bunching problems, which is another problem. It either strings or bunches. Supports was another major issue I had. There was a model that I printed that was really small. The supports were about as thick as the model. I was already breaking the model. To prevent that, you want your supports to be thin enough that they're easy to break off, but thick enough that they keep your model from drooping. The best thing to do is you generate supports, yes, support structure normal, and then your support placement is only the things that touch your build plate or only the things that touch the bed. This is to make sure that your supports only affect areas here. So if it's this model, my fingers are the supports, this is the support you're getting. Support overhang angle is 45 degrees. If your model's printing at an angle like this, that's when it starts developing supports to keep it upright. Anything more than that is very excessive. You don't need that much support and it's going to ruin it because then you have to cut it open. Next, for support line distance, I made it 10 millimeters because I didn't want them to be too close together. The closer they are, the stronger they are, the harder they are to take off. Once again, just explore your settings and you should be fine. The last thing I did was build plate adhesion. I fixed that so by adding a skirt. That way, it would make it easier to take off your model when the time comes that it's done. While this bad boy does its work, you know, it's not as easy to scrape off as rolled ice cream. Sometimes, it just really, really won't let go. So I found that if you chuck the thing in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes, it's gonna pop right off. These are things I discovered as a first timer that are mind-blowing to me. I discovered them, I saw them on YouTube, and I fiddled with the settings, and then I sprinted, and then I saw the results, and I was like, oh. So that's how this thing works. With that being said, once I took my models from Cura, I then sliced it. I then put the included SD card into the machine. From there, you make your selection. You print it after you've heated and you're good to go. That was my beginner guide to 3D printing and my review of the Creality Ender 3 version 2. If you like my content and want to see more of it, please make sure to leave a like, comment, definitely subscribe to my channel. Until next time, props to you and costumes too. Peace.